former CIA acting director Mike Morrell, whose new book out now, The Great War of Our Time. Thank you for coming. The book's getting a lot of attention. You write about the Bush years and the Obama years and CIA's fight against radical extremism and a whole bunch more. Uh, and we're going to talk about that and, and some current stuff. But let me ask you first the great old author standby question, which is why did you write the book? So really three reasons. Um, one is that um, I'm deeply concerned that this fight against Islamic extremism um, is going to be a generational fight. I think my grandkids um, are going to be fighting this fight. Um, and so I wanted Americans to understand what the threat is, and I wanted Americans to understand that we have to keep the pressure on these terrorists or we're going to get hit again. So that's the first reason. The second reason there is, is that there are a lot of myths out there about the CIA. You know, one myth is that, is that we do everything right. You know, it's kind of the James Bond myth. There isn't a secret we can't steal and a plot we can't stop. Not true. Right? This, the second myth is that everything we touch Fa you know, we fail at. It's kind of the get smart Maxwell, the Maxwell smart myth, right? Um, that's not true. Right? And then, then the third myth is kind of the Jason Bourne myth, right? Which is that we're a rogue agency, that we do things the President of the United States doesn't know about, that the Congress doesn't know about. Well, that's not true, right? The reality is that the CIA is a bunch of incredibly hardworking, dedicated people trying to protect the country, and we get many things wrong, but we get, we get many things right but we get some things wrong like any organization. And I wanted Americans to understand all that. And then the third reason is, is I happen to believe, and this sounds weird coming from a former spy, that former senior officials have a responsibility to tell the American people what they did when they were in government. That this is a democracy and the American people need to know everybody's perspective on the decisions they made and the decisions they saw. I think that's really important. That's what, what, what you guys do every day. It's a great list. Countries kicking the tires on presidential candidates now. We are too. We want to kind of turn you into our political correspondent here on sure. foreign policy, national security. If if you're looking at a candidate, Democrat or Republican, and trying to figure out do they have what it takes to deal right. with crises, what are the two or three questions you want to ask them, say, about Putin? Yeah. So um, I would want them, right, to want to ask me questions about Putin. Right. I'd want them to, to understand that, that there's an organization called CIA where you go and you can find out anything you want about somebody. What I would want to know about a candidate in national security is, and I'm a George Shultz foreign policy guy, which is, you know, foreign policy, national security is pretty easy. Um, if you say what you're really thinking, right, you'd be very clear about what you think and about what you know, um, and you do what you say, right? You draw a red line. You follow through, um, and you carry a big, big stick. Okay, you know, so so that's what I would want to know from the three candidates. Are you going to do those three things on national security? Well, what, to take that to, to, to another uh, to another hot spot in the world. What about Iran? So, do you understand the big picture here? Because the nuclear issue, and this is what I would be doing if I was advising this president, right? The nuclear issue really important that we get our arms around it and do something around it. But Iran poses a much greater threat to the United States than just the nuclear program. Iran conducts terrorism um, itself against other countries, uh, namely Israel, but also its neighbors, the rest of its neighbors. Um, it supports international terrorist groups, namely Hezbollah. Right? Hezbollah could not exist without the support it gets from Iran. It supports insurgencies throughout the Middle East, right? It, happening in Yemen right now. So I'd want to know, do you understand the bigger picture here, right? And do you have a strategy not only to deal with the nuclear problem, but do you have a strategy to deal with the bigger challenge that Iran faces? I remember one of the most memorable speeches I ever heard in Washington was Pat Moynihan attacking the CIA for having missed the downfall of the Soviet Union. It seems to me that now that a similar kind of speech, if a guy like Pat Moynihan was around, could yeah. be given about the way that the CIA and the intelligence missed ISIS. Yeah. Um, what, what, is the, what explains that? How can the CIA miss something in both cases, but let's just stick with the current one, that big? And, and shouldn't Americans wonder whether the CIA is not, in fact, a little more Maxwell smartish? Yeah, than you so make I, it will out to challenge, I will challenge the premise of your question, yeah. right? We didn't miss ISIS. We missed a small part of it, right? So, so as you know, ISIS started out as Al Qaeda in Iraq, right? And Al Qaeda in Iraq was at its nadir um, at the end of 2011 when we left. And we watched, as soon as we left, Al-Qaeda in Iraq start to gain strength. And it gained strength for two reasons. One is the military and intelligence pressure that the United States helped apply was reduced. 
And two, Prime Minister Maliki started misbehaving and started alienating and disenfranchising Sunnis, and that fed al-Qaeda in Iraq. We reported all of that. Then al-Qaeda in Iraq goes across the border into Syria and becomes ISIS. They just changed their name. Same group. They just changed their name. Can't be al-Qaeda in Iraq fighting in Syria, right? So they changed their name. And we report their growing, their, their growing strength there. Why? They're getting recruits. They're getting weapons from Assad's arsenals. And they're getting money. And we're reporting all of that, right? The part we missed, the part we missed was the collapse of the Iraqi army in the face of essentially a terrorist group, right? The Iraqi army fell apart. We didn't see that coming. So that's the piece we got wrong, not the bigger piece. Well, a pretty big piece. A pretty big piece. Yeah. The man George W. Bush called Mikey. Yes. Author of the new book. And that George Tennant called something else that he can't say on the air. Come on. We'll come on. Just give us that one. Come on. Rhymes with what? You can't say. Can't even say what it rhymes can't with. Can't even say. Because wow. that would give it away. Wow. All right. We're going to get out the source side after the show. The book again, The Great War of Our Time, Mike Merle, former spy and now best-selling author to be. Thanks for joining us.